welcome to my youtube channel on today's episode of Rob and Rob with King Tonto we will be discussing about relationships yeah you heard me right relationships the theme will be insecurities no rather overcoming insecurities in relationships why people fear relationships why we need and crave for them why we cannot do without them and some of the things that can make you sabotage in a relationship my guest today is none other than mr ebuka and nature mr ebuka and nature is a self-help guru and a businessman simply put mr ebuka is a love doctor We'll be talking about love, relationship, and everything I just talked about while we're having this awesome piece of pastry, this cake. I'll be talking about this cake just a little bit, okay? This cake is from one of the best bakeries that I do know. Actually, my family bakery, Nikki Cake Studio. Nikki Cake Studio has been my family bakery for five years, and I have not been disappointed. For five good years, I have never eaten any other cake, and you would know why in a bit. Because with Nikki Cake Studio, there is always something sweet in the middle. Hi, welcome back to my show, Grub and Rob with King Tonto. And help me welcome my guest, Mr. Ebuka and Nechebe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. I like the spread. You're looking great. Oh, way. thank you. Excellent. You love this? I love this. You sure I'm, you do? I'm, I'm, I'm aching to eat that. You, oh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Um, okay, your first tax. I would want us to actually cut through these cakes. Wow, okay. I want us to show them what is in the middle of this cake. Of the cake? Yes, actually, two beautiful cakes and something. So, would you help me? I can, I can help you. Okay, would you do the cutting? Yes, I'm. Um, While I do the packing. Yeah, so which one should we go with? <laughs> let's, let's do this let's one do first. Let's do this one first. Excellent. The deep yes, bites. Sir. Do we count? Do we mm. do anything like that? Do we do? Uh, okay, well, do we want us to count? Let's, let's count. Like, it's always nice. You Happy new episode. Hooray! Yeah, hooray! <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Nice. Mm. So we'll cut you another we one. Cut another one. Small mm -hmm. slice because social distancing <laughs> between my buttons. It's uh, excellent. So let's okay. have that. Well, we have this. Yes. Oh, but we'd have to cut another one. Oh, yeah. awesome. Yes, I know, right? Mm, goodness. Mm -hmm. That just looks yummy. Yummy. Look so. at that. Mm, like okay, it. it'll come this way. I would turn it for you here. What kind so of cake is this? It's actually a cake from Nikki K Studio. It's actually one of my favorite bakeries in the whole world. Hmm. Yeah. It looks like it will soon become my favorite bakery too. <laughs> it you has to, it has to. Can you see that? Can you see that? I can see. It. Oh my god. Yeah. OMG. Like. This so what's what the, what's, what's, what's that? This is um you know the nuts. What's it called this nut again? Um, potassium. Yeah. Yeah, it's potassium nuts into cream. Into yes, cream. beautiful, and um, yeah. So pistachio nuts. I never. Seen, yes. I've never, never tried something like this. Um, can we do this one too? Let's do that. Let's do that. Can you help me cut it? Uh, I can help you okay. cut. Okay. I'm looking for. Like, <laughs> I don't want to mix the pistachio. Oh, okay. Yes, we we, we have um. Let's wipe this. We could clean this yeah, down. So we, we keep. Ooh, if it's gooey. Nice it's... To the, it feels it's... nice to the touch. If okay. you're a foodie, you would know why I'm doing this. <laughs> oh, oh my, my god. god! Oh my god! You need to come this way. Oh, oh, oh! Okay, let's take this thing here. This is this is this is just beautiful. I like it. Oh. Mm. Oh wow! It's flowing like lava, like you know, like <laughs> uh, I like, love that explanation. <laughs> like it's flowing like lava, like can can you come closer, please? I need you to just see in in come closer. Show some more yeah. lava juice coming through. Oh, I love that lava juice. Oh my! <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. Mm. Nice, Thank nice, you nice. very much. 
much. Thank you. Okay, that's your first touch. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sam. Yeah. So, Mr. Ebuka, we have pastries, we have snails, we have shrimps. We do have wine. I heard wine. you were a lover of yeah, wine. Yeah, I love of wine. Ooh. Please, pour me some. Yes, please. Excellent. Yeah. Lovely. I'll take a little bit myself. We have water. And I'm a coffee lover, so I'll yeah. probably stick to coffee. I'll, I'll go with the wine and the snails. Wine and snails. That's excellent. Okay, fine. Escargons and wine. Okay, yeah. so down to business now, Mr. Mm -hmm. Ebuka. Yeah. Before you came in here, I okay. already told my guests who you were. Okay. I told them the topics that we're going to be talking about. I told them that we're going to talk about a relationship mm. and how your relationship doctor and all of that. But you know, there's one thing for me to tell people who you are. There's another thing, another thing for you to tell them who you are. So please, can they really get to hear you? Okay. Hi, my name is Ibuka Nichebe and I am a neuro-linguistic programmer, a therapist if you like. I'm also a businessman, so much more, nowadays I'm much more a businessman than I'm a therapist. Um, but then using the skills I've learned over the years in people management, we just transfer it into managing clientele and then also helping my friends, family members and then of course you, the viewer, to have better relationships whether that's professionally or personally so hopefully stay tuned and you'll learn quite a number of things you can be doing to get your relationships to the next level okay um i know that i mean i'm educated but i did not get to understand what you said lingering lingu yeah okay so neuro-linguistic programming yeah neuro-linguistic is really the science of study of excellence human excellence right um so to break it down when people say they are courting, so just between when you're engaged, you you know you're trying to mm. get to know someone. So it looks good. Mm. Mm. Young man, mm. let me. I'm I'm feeling like I'm jealous mm. already. So mm. I just, I just <laughs> go ahead and and try that as, oh my God, as soon as this possible. Is it's super really, amazing. It's heavenly, I'm right? sorry to cut you. But Not sorry. A problem. <laughs> Not a problem. So again, if I know Tonto is a foodie, so if I want to get this is this is NLP right now. I know okay, Tonto actually does seem to like food. If I want to get Tonto to agree to an appointment, I will likely ask her, can we meet in eight or five restaurants, right? There's this really nice dish. And even though she hasn't asked me about oh, why are we really meeting, right? If she's a foodie, then that's going to lead her because it's what we call a meta program. So your linguistic programming really helps you, whether for your professional life or your personal life, in understanding people around you. But mostly important is about understanding yourself. So it tries to make a difference between interpersonal relationship and intrapersonal relationship. The relationship you have with yourself. Do you like yourself? Okay. Do you are you someone that you can stay alone with? Can you be in quarantine with just yourself for two weeks and not run mad? For a lot of people, the answer sadly is no. Right? Mm -hmm. We avoid, we distract, we avoid trying to get into a relationship with knowing who you are, who you really are, what you want for yourself. Is it something that your mom taught you to like, the society taught you to like, or what you actually do like? So it's all of these things we try to unravel when studying the course and it helps you. I mean, for me, it's not so theoretical, it's actually a practical course. So for you as an entertainer, you, you're into different things, you're doing acting, you kind of already know this because when you have to be in character, for example, in one of your movie roles. You have to think in a certain way. So the neuro linguistic programming kind of helps you think like an actor and put yourself in other people's shoes, right? So that could be for both business and personal and relationship. relationship. Okay. Exactly. That was where I wanted you to just land because I, I had already introduced you as um, a relationship um, guru. Yeah. Um, but now again, you have made me believe that there are two parts of the relationship that you get involved in, the business relationship and the emotional mm -hmm. relationship. Precisely. Well, today we will be digging into the emotional part. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay? Yeah. Um, well, relationship to me uh, is, is a very essential part of living. Yeah. It's an, it's, you, you have to have relationships with almost everything around you for you to survive. Yeah. Relation, working relationship, um, home relationship, child and mother relationship, father and mother, uh, uh, father and son relationship. I mean, yeah. relationship is our life, basically. Right. And um, not all of us get it right. I, for one, I, I don't think I, I have ever gotten it right. And uh, so many other people out there, I'm sure you'll be able to agree with me, not everybody has gotten it right. And um, there are so many mistakes we do make in relationships. One, sabotaging. We do sabotage ourselves a lot in relationships. Right. I would like you to 
really touch these angles so that we can actually um, inspire the people. Okay. My first question to you would be, why do you think people get insecure in relationships? Hmm. What, what is that thing that makes people insecure in a relationship? Is it the relationship? Is it who I am? Is it who the next person is or how the next person is treating me? What, what is that lead? So an insecurity in a relationship can be caused by several factors. There's not one particular thing, right? It could be you're coming from a past court, a relationship that was abusive, right? Nowadays, they call it gaslighting. Right, so if you've been in a relationship where somebody tells you, oh, you're fat, you're ugly, you're stupid, right? And it gets to the point where you start to even question your sanity, mm -hmm. question your integrity. In other words, like your wholeness, like, am I really okay, right? When you leave that relationship and you move into another relationship, you might still have those lagging questions and in an effort to not feel like you're, something is lacking, that something is found wanting in you, you can start feeling really insecure in the relationship. So you're thinking, well, oh, this person might leave me just like my ex left me and all of that. So that's, that's past. The past comes to haunt you. Then there are other people that it's not the past relationship. It's just their own relationship with themselves. Okay. Now, are you trying to tell me that um, what I experienced in my last relationship can have a huge effect in my present relationship? If you let that's, it. That's exactly what you just well, said. If you let it. If I let it. If you let it. Okay. Right, so okay. it doesn't have to, right? You can decide to see people as individuals and you say, oh, person Y is like this, doesn't necessarily mean that all men are scum, okay, or all women are gold diggers, or whatever. People like to try to generalize and paint a broad picture based on just their interaction with one person, right? So you need to be able to put yourself out there and realize, oh, person A did this. If Emeka broke your heart, it's Emeka's own thing, mm -hmm. it has nothing to do with the next guy you meet, okay. right? So that's, that's as simple as it gets, but it's not so simple because for some people, we think in three different ways, right? We either generalize, and this is what people do. So somebody, oh, one Yoruba um, boy broke your heart, so everybody's a Yoruba demon, right? So that's a generalization, okay. right? Then there's people that on their own, they delete, they delete, and they say something, so kids can do this sometimes. They can come and say, well, nobody loves me. I say, what do you mean nobody loves you? So nobody, nobody wants to play a game with me. And so when you say nobody loves you, that's you're deleting your mom, your dad, right? Everybody that you that loves you, right? It's, people actually grow up and still think this way, like mm. kids, right? And yeah. they cannot just think, oh, today's a bad day. And instead of saying today's a bad day, they say every day. It's I've been a having day. a bad day. Yeah, every day's a bad day. So that's 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 another form of generalization. But it comes with deletion. If you delete like useful experiences that should normally should be good reference points for you to lean on to, especially when you're having a tough time in a relationship. Wow. Oh, wow. So, that's amazing. Well, it's... That's, I, I actually got... I know that... I know a little bit of what you just said, but for you, as, uh, um, broadening it like that, it really makes a lot of sense. Um, it really makes me understand that some of the things that we... Baggages. I think we, baggages. Call, it, we call it baggages. Yeah. Most of the baggages that we carry the self-conscious. Yeah. So there is no, um, I cannot judge Mr. A because Mr. A is not the same as Mr. B. Exactly. And uh, one thing I also realized is that generalization is just poor judgment of character. That's right. I cannot say because you did this, because you're a scam, because he didn't do that. Okay. Okay, fine. All right. All right. All right. So I hope you heard that. Okay. Because most of us women out there, we always, not just women, men and women, we are, we generalize everything. We say, oh, you know, that man, because that one, that person broke my heart and that's why all men are scums or because this woman took my money and that's why all women are gold diggers. Yeah. But no, women come in different packages, just like men come in different packages. Precise. And that's what I just learned today. I hope you learned that too. Um, could you tell me some of the most common fears in a relationship? The most common spheres that could actually drive you into self sabotage. Because there are sometimes, I, I will tell you a, 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 a little story. I know of a lady, actually, it was, it's fiction, but it's a story. Um, I know of a lady who couldn't get pregnant and uh, her boyfriend wanted a child by all means. Mm -hmm. And because 
she couldn't get pregnant by herself she had to lie that she was pregnant she had to go over to another state pretend she was pregnant and i think that those are one of the things that can actually affect your mind and you sabotage yourself in that's your right. because that's self-sabotaging you have to travel lie you even have to steal a baby to come, come back. back and say okay this is my baby because she want and only because not because she wanted to be a mother only because she wanted to keep that man so in essence, she just sabotaged her whole life, her whole freedom to even become a mother yeah. because she got caught and she was going to go to jail. So there are so many things in a relationship that can make people sabotage themselves. And there are so many times that we are sabotaging ourselves for a relationship that we don't even know we are doing it. Yeah, because yeah. people try and, I mean, the society today tells you about, is, when we call it materialism, it's not so much about the material things, it's also about being seen to have the ideal life. Right, so having the ideal man is part of this ideal life. You can have everything else, and if what is important to your friends is, oh, you you know, well, you're not yet married, right? So now you you start to look at that like something else to acquire. Okay. Right. So you can, in that kind of relationship, you're trying to. There's an agenda. The agenda may not be love. The agenda is fulfilling that which you desire. If you don't communicate that clearly. Obviously, there's going to be problems right down the road. So, what you just said, you said it might be fiction, but trust me, life is stranger than fiction. fiction. People have done even much more worse. weird things, worse yeah. things than this, right? So, it happens every time. But well, every time you try to, this is not sacrifice. She didn't sacrifice by going to steal a baby. No, she was trying to, she couldn't change this. But because of this relationship, she decides, I'm, look, I'm going to do whatever it takes to be a mother, including break the law. Sorry. You're sweating really, really I'm, I'm sweating really yeah. badly, yeah. right? Yeah. And that's what happens when I get excited. Like, uh -huh. when I get excited about talking about relationships, mm -hmm. people need to understand, like, you can find somebody that loves you the way you are. Because what's, what's love? What's this, thing, what's this thing called love? Right? Dr. Sue said, love is two perfectly twisted people finding themselves and being perfectly twisted for each other. Together. So, mm. when you're Chris... That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it makes sense. Because when you're Chris and my Chris match, mm. then we just say, oh, you're, you're meant for me. Mm. You, 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 the person, the right person is meant for you. It's not meant for the world. Okay. It's meant for you. Because no matter what, like, if you're too docile, then somebody says you're too quiet. If you're too crazy, they say you're too up mm. there, out there. So, but when you're just the right blend, then that's your neurosis, right? Your neurosis is perfectly fitted to somebody else. That's what you're looking for. That's what I'm looking for. That's what everybody's looking for. Sometimes you call it friendship. Sometimes you call it love. But uh, then again, it's, it's what we're all looking for. Right, that's human touch. Be able to connect with somebody, to be able to share with somebody your fears, your hopes, your aspirations. That's what I think it is. So back to your question. Now, if what if I get into a relationship outside of sickness and death for my partner, right? Outside of that fear, is the fear of being left alone. And being lonely is top five of man's greatest, 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 greatest. Because if you know Maslow's hierarchy of needs, it tells you at the very basic, everybody wants food, shelter, sex, and water, right? But the next level... Food, shelter, sex, and... And, and water, right? And food, clothing. Food, shelter, shelter sex, sex and um, water, then there's clothing, right? This, this is okay. the basic... hierarchy. The yeah. hierarchy of needs, right? So this is the basic. You, you need that. During COVID-19, people went out to buy food. You know, you want to be able to... In some countries, they said, look, landlords, don't pay rent, right? Because mm. we need this. So everybody went back to back. their basic needs. As soon as you fulfill those needs, the next need is the need for companionship. Mm, so this is a need. True. We need that. We need so you can't just be in a nice house, nice eight bedroom house, and you're alone. You need somebody to be with you, right? Otherwise, you can't be said to be whole. You can't. There's only so much you can love yourself. And while you can be an introvert like myself, you can be an introvert and say, oh, "I like being by myself." But even then, you still need. Physical touch, you still need someone to tell you how was your day. You know how it is very important question. Oh yes. Yeah, oh so, yeah. It's it's yeah. it gives you a sense of fulfillment. fulfillment. Yeah, so, it's like someone cares, someone's checking, someone's up, checking on up on you. On you right. Someone has your back. Good. I get you. I, I feel that. So, Sometimes I get really sad. I go Sometimes before I, I, I had my child, yeah. you know, I come back from a very tired day. I just come home. I, I meet grumpy workers. I meet my dogs, grumpy dogs, and I'm just there. I'm grumpy I'm too grumpy because too. I just came back from work and there's nobody loving each other. Yeah. You know, but now I come back home and I know if I know there's no food at home, if I know there's no water at home, I know that there is love at home, at home waiting, waiting for me at the doorstep no. so yeah. i understand what you mean that's i even want to cry right now no, but that, that, that's such a beautiful thing you, you say, say that i love food I need to when the kids, no, because when the kids when the kids are really young 
Right? How old is your son? <laughs> my son is four years old. Four years old. So this, is the, this is the ideal age, right? Because when they are four and you go out for two seconds, right? To go buy maybe a recharge card, go downstairs to escort your friend. When you come back, they look at you like you've you mm. gone away forever and they, hey, mommy! And they run to you at the door. Compare that to when you're in an old relationship, maybe you've been married for five years, mm. ten years. You come back and the person can't even bother yeah. to stand up to go get the door. Yeah. Right? So you start even looking like, is this yeah. what it is? It feels like a drag. Mm. Right? Again, it now goes back to the fundamentals. When you're feeling this way, what happens? Do you just suck it up and just say, mm, or do you communicate? Because this is really about communication. When you say you're in a relationship, Tonto, it's really about the communication you, you share with yeah. somebody. True. That's how deep the relationship is. When you call somebody your best friend, it's about the number of secrets that that person has, your secret mm. that the person has with them. That actually brings me to another question, which is very important. Okay? Now, it's about communication. You just said something about communication. It's about communication in a relationship. How does communication... Is communication a key factor? in a relationship in a stable relationship i know it is okay i want you to say how it is i mean a lot of people say communicate you have to talk to me i have to talk to you yes fine definitely but a lot of people do not understand what communication means it's it's not just oh how is your day my day is fine it's talking it's talking about even the minimal that's for me yeah. i think it's talking about even the minimal things it's trying to understand yourself to the to the total maximum right am, am i wrong with that no no you're you're, okay. you're very much you're very much on point on this and okay. this is what i'll say about communication people know it's important people say oh communication is key communication is key and it's become a cliche communication is yeah. key. the challenge however is they know what communication is they don't know how to communicate how to, thank you i think that's so where my question was going is, is the big difference, how to communicate right? how to communicate becomes the the priority how do you communicate with somebody who um, so the different kinds of people. You don't seem to be eating my food. I'm, it's I'm supposed not to be drug this. and rub. No, I'm you're not. I am enjoying I think this. you're a wine man. So okay, I'll just I'll just, just go with my mom. Okay. Wine. <laughs> <laughs> it's so very Canadian. Okay. My take on 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 the whole communication part. Yeah. And everybody can keep learning. I'm still learning. Okay. Like I'm still learning because for everybody I meet, they have a different way they want to be Cheers, communicated. By the way. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. To. Grab and Rob. Grab and Rob. We're King Tonto. And King to Tonto. relationships all over the world. All over the world. Yeah, I wish you all well. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Mm -hmm. So, here's the point. People need to know how the other person wants to be communicated. But this way it gets tricky. Wait, if, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Did you get that? People have to know how the other person wants to be communicated. That's right. That's, that's, that's huge. Yeah. You know? I don't think you understood it. Can you repeat again? People need to learn how the other person wants to be communicated. Some people want to be communicated all the time. They want you to check up on them, say hi, how are you, how was your night, and you go on and on. And they want, I mean, for them to feel completely loved, they need to have you talk to them on the phone for 30 minutes. I once was dating a lady. She wants you, you have to talk to her for an hour for her to feel completely loved. So you ask the question, because questions are the secret. So what would it take for you to feel totally it's loved. loved and it could be you'll be surprised it's the smallest things because what makes you love someone is not when they give you a big prize they buy yeah. you a big mercedes benz yeah. it's the small things it's that they do thing. so what are those small things that you want to be done and if you can communicate at that point of you know what when i come back home and i, I, I like you to just rub my feet mm. you see i don't even need you to ask me how was a day i just need a foot massage or back rub or i want you to come open the door for me as opposed to sending your nanny to come open the door yeah. right i i just like that i like because in my head my idea of love is seeing my mom go and open the door for my dad and that's my idea of love and i want you to do that you have to communicate that mm. but there's a secret and i just learned this you have to be able to communicate your needs right with your partner or your significant other that they can do at the minimal time. Like, what's the smallest thing they can do? Mm -hmm. Don't say, anytime I come back, you don't still. And this is what this is how communication works in most most. Every time I come back, every time you know you just sit down there, be pressing phone, pressing phone, pressing phone, <laughs> or be playing game, playing game, playing game, or be watching football. I don't know football. Can can't you just say hi? You see, and then they accuse. Mm. And now when you accuse, then the other person wants to defend. Because that's how it yeah. ends. You, you yeah. accuse me, I defend myself. Mm. And say, what do you mean every day? Yes, did I do that? And it becomes a question of, that's outside of what you want. Yeah. A better way would be for you to just say, 
look, will it be so hard if you every day just do X, Y, Z? And it has to be really, really tiny thing that they can do. Mm. Right? Really tiny thing. And if you can tell them that, don't, people don't change. People compromise. Did you get, you get that? <laughs> Did you get that? People don't change. People compromise. And this is something I've been saying for donkey years. People don't change. Grown ups don't change. We can only tweak. They tweak, exactly. But so that's about it. That's it. They, they know, look, this is me, but because of you. Mm. So you say, for example, you tell your boyfriend, say, look, I don't like when you smoke and you try to come and kiss me right that's that's a conversation like legitimate thing you don't like smell smoke mm. so what happens I, he compromises and says okay fine when i smoke i'm going to I'm brush my teeth mm. right i'm going to mm. i'm going to come back and first thing i'm going to do is go, go brush my teeth so i come back spending fresh that's a compromise because ordinarily he would have just gone to bed and with all of that smell so it's you understanding how best to communicate that because again your spouse may be different you said something that um you you need to tell me how you want to be communicated and most people don't understand that okay i, I might just feel very but like you said um nobody comes to greet me at the door blah 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 but the, the truth is that i have never communicated to these people that i wanted these greetings yes before okay i've never said anything to this but then again i feel so bad when they don't do it so i think it's just my self-entitlement kind of thingy work going on and i'm not trying to and i'm not uh, passing the message across to the next person so would you tell them how to truly communicate because i want to and i want to be treated this way and treat me this way and two different things one is you're not saying it the other one is that you're saying it yeah and that is a big problem in a relationship that's right that is one of the worst problems actually communication in yeah. a relationship yeah. and um that's what a lot of african relationship is suffering today so if you just maybe talk about communication more so they could understand and do it while doing it to the camera for them so it could right. be more personal this okay. time around yeah so let me put it this way um viewers you know this because you've experienced this when you're really hurt or when you're even afraid to hurt your partner so you don't want to share with him or her your person what you want to be done simply because you're afraid that you might hurt them Right, so it could be just anything. It could be in the bedroom. You want them to do a certain thing, and you don't know how to bring it, so they don't look at you like, "Hmm, where did you learn that one from?" <laughs> right. So again, you you just shelve it, and it it becomes an unexpressed desire. Mm. An unexpressed desire will forever remain unfulfilled expectation. expectations. And so you keep getting this disappointment, and then you wake up one morning, and you say, "Look." I'm no longer in love with you for X and Y reasons, and you leave the relationship. It's simply because at a point you made a decision not to talk. That's it. You made a decision not to express yourself. And when you make that decision, then you have to live with that unexpressed or unfulfilled desire for a long time. So a better way to do this is decide what you want early on. Decide what you want really early on. Like, this is what I want Ibuka to do. If you want Ibuka, oh, Ibuka should go down on me. Ibuka should do X. Ibuka should give me money every week. Ibuka should give me, meet me at the door, tell me hi, or call me in between my day and say, how's your day going? Ibuka doesn't know that because Ibuka might just be really stupid. And let's face it, like, most of your partners are stupid. I'm, like me, Ibuka is, like, number one. And Ibuka, I don't know if you have stupid you are, but Ibuka, <laughs> I'm thinking we're, we're carrying first on that position. <laughs> So I don't know that. So I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not going to read your mind. And first thing, sure. I'm not going to read your mind because maybe my ex girlfriend didn't complain. And now you're complaining about mm -hmm. this. So if my ex girlfriend didn't complain about it, then now I'm. You so, didn't even know that there's a problem. I don't even know there was a problem. And now you're going to tell me this. You better tell me with some level of um, emotional intelligence. Oh. So don't, don't just tell me. Oh. Don't you know that you should be doing? No, 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 no. Because nobody ever told me. My mom didn't tell me. I wasn't dating my mom, but she never told me that I should do this. But now you want me to do that? Tell me. But don't tell me that, oh, don't make it look complicated. Tell me the minimum thing. Will it be so hard if you give me head for five minutes? See, that's, that's the... I, they like me, they give me head for a long time too. <laughs> yeah, they give me. <laughs> it's a different conversation. You, you don't want that. You, don't, you want the minimum. Like, what's the minimum effort the person can do? So they can say yes. Okay. Because this, we don't change, remember? We don't change yeah, the compromise. We don't so change the compromise. Even if, I as a title chief. You know me, title chief. So all those things you're talking about, I don't know how to do all those things. So, right? <laughs> but as a title chief, now you want me to do that? You say, would it be so hard if you just do this 
right? Just for two minutes, right? So it becomes, okay, it's just two minutes. If I love this person, I can do this for two minutes. But then we learn and we grow and we evolve and we change. But we don't, we don't just change overnight. No, that's hard to do unless, you, I mean, like, Jesus visits you on the road to Damascus. But outside of that, you're going to just compromise and just take little steps. So baby steps. Baby steps. What's the first baby step that is important to you? Don't say something that's not important. Like, I want you to be using um, roll-on. No, it is not very important to you. Don't go for what's important to you and say exactly how you want that to be fulfilled. Mm. Because human beings are into four categories. I would like to divide them into four categories. You may be married with an obliger. An obliger would, like the name implies an obliger. So they won't tell you anything wrong. It's just going to be... Baby, how was it? Just say, hey, fine. Maybe what on the quality? Of, I like to ask this question too. Um, I say, on the quality of one to ten, what's the what's the quality of our marriage now? Right. So I don't say what's the quality of me. I don't try to judge. I say mm. the marriage. The marriage is not me. It's it's both me and you. Our effort. I say, what do, where do you think our marriage is on the, on the scale of one to ten? Okay. Right. And that question is a trick question because is at this point someone can choose to be frank with you and tell you. I think six or five. Anything less than seven is actually like a like you're in the bring mm -hmm. in the red zone, mm -hmm. right? So at that point they tell you, oh, I think it's um six over ten. Don't say ah uh ah, -uh. which one is six over ten? No, that's not that's not that's not how to approach that, right? You, the next question should be, what will it take to get a ten? So regardless of what they give you, whether they give you eight over ten, like the last time I asked this question, they gave me seven point five. That was my score, seven point five, right? So uh, Mr. Relationship Guy has 7.5, right? I'm telling you this for, to drive home a point. So 7.5. Now, I was happy with 7.5 because I was really busy last year running all over the country. I was thinking, okay, what would it take for this woman, you know? And in my head, I was thinking maybe she wants a new car. I was thinking to myself, like, all of these things. So I asked the question, what, what would it take to get a 10? And it was simple. It was like, just make a day, a single day every week that is for me. Because you have all the other days to mm. every other thing. It was make one day that week and just for me. That was, that was something I could do. Like, I've tried, not like, a, like so, so after 52 weeks, maybe I've tried most of the weeks, right? But that day I can say, okay, let's, let's do this. And let's the most important thing is that you're putting more effort with the request of the next person. Compromising. Compromising, right? thank you. Compromising, you're compromising. That's what, that's what love is yeah. about. It's not about me changing. It's about me sacrificing something that's important to me because I know it's even more important to you. So that's where I want us to go into. Is your spouse an obliger because if they're obliging and they tell you oh no there's no problem of her me you know i don't complain and they're always obliging one day you experience what we call obliger rebellion where mm. for no reason they just blow up mm. and they just say no i'm tired of every time i'm doing this i'm doing that your mom is trusting me this and they just blow up that's when people blow up and say i have had enough, I've no, had enough. this person has not even said anything, anything before. before you've just been accumulated thank you they keep stuff. keeping it mm. and the question is why why is because with our emotions, there are three, three ways we deal with, uh, deal with emotions, right? We can either choose to ignore the emotions, like we don't even go there. So there's some conversations that people don't even have with their significant others simply because it's too thorny an issue. It's, it causes them, they can start tearing up, they start crying, the men get violent, so they don't even talk about it. There's complete avoidance of those emotions or anything that will come up with that to bring in that, that topic up. They just say, no, I don't talk about it, and they clamp down. Second kind of um, avoidance is denial. So something could be wrong with you. Say, for example, your husband hits you every now and again, right? Or just gaslights you. He talks down on you, tells you all kinds of rubbish, right? And just kills your morale and your spirit. And you can't talk about it. And you can't talk about it. Or you just say, no, that's how all men are. No, all men are like that. It's just you. It's just you. No, all, not all men are doing the same thing. But you say, oh, that's all men. That's you denying that there's something to be done. And then lastly, there's competition. Yeah, mm -hmm. with your emotions, you can compete. So, someone comes to you and says, "Man, my husband has just been, I don't know, just acting this way, acting this way. You know, the other day he hits me. Then the other, your friend that you're telling, so that she gives you good advice, just says, hmm. is if only he's that he hits you, only is good oh, now. No. If you know the one that is doing me now, 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 and then 
so they start competing with yeah. who's more damaged yeah who's more damaged than yeah. in, in the relationship mm-hmm. right so you you don't none of this and damage like, people damage people damage they people. can never just repair you so um I, I think that's a very good key to um it's important to know yeah it's i wish we had more time i would really have gone into who and where to take your problems to because um i, I for one have been a victim of oh i tell my problem to this person and you're either like you're saying having a competition with me who don't suffer past for this for situation this problem, yes. or you're making me feel like though my problem was not a problem enough for me to even speak on That's yeah true. so um <coughs> thank you very much mr Ebuka. i really did enjoy this session i really got a lot from communication thank you very much for tuning in to grab and rob with king tonto i'm still here with my guest mr ebuka and nichebe who is a relationship guru a relationship financial relationship and also emotional relationship but for today we actually dabbled on a little bit of emotional relationship relationships and um uh, things to curb um um what 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 do we say how do we say okay just ways for you to have a good relationship we talked about communication we talked about how people do not change but they can adapt we talked about a lot of things and i hope that you were there from the beginning if you weren't there from the from the beginning please click on the subscription button so you can subscribe and watch now thank you very much for tuning in we love you and god bless you and don't forget my lovely kiss Mwah!